tonight on Chimps Talk Africa, my guest is renowned gospel artist, Bucci. The Lord Almighty God, Lord Almighty God, Lord Almighty God, we serve truly. He shares about his life, his journey with Christ, and the foundation of his music tonight on James Talk Africa. Before we do that, please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. And now here's your host, Chim Onyibilanma. Hi there, welcome to this week's episode of your show. Thank you so much for joining us. I am so more than excited to share with you my conversation with the renowned gospel singer, Bucci. But before we do so, our dear friends at uh, Shalom Farm Ministries, uh, Uncle Angus Burkham, is having a big meeting here in South Africa. I want to share a clip with you quickly. If you're in South Africa, make sure you go for this program. I greet you in Jesus' precious name. We are so excited about the upcoming event, Speak Jesus, on the 24th of September, Heritage Day in Krugersdorf, where we're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ move supernaturally because we are going to speak Jesus. Go to our website, please, angusbucken.co.za, and all the information is there. Jesus bless you. Goodbye. Yeah. Now, let's go to that interview with me and renowned gospel musician, Bucci. Wow, this guy's music has been a big, big impact in my life. And uh, I want to just take you to that conversation because it really, really profound some of the things he shares. This week and next week, we'll be looking at this conversation with Bucci. Let's go now. Bucci. Yes, indeed. <laughs> my brother, I have been blessed by your song uh, over the years. I got introduced to your song many years ago, and it's been central in my family. Uh, I think a lot about the fusion of creativity. Secondly, devotion. And thirdly, culture. I don't find that so many places. How did you encounter the Lord? It was dramatic. Um in the sense that something happened that led to it, that triggered it off. I was raised in Sunday school. And like I always say, the Bible I won in a quiz competition in Sunday school stands as evidence that my parents raised me in the way of the Lord. But something happens usually between um, infancy and adulthood, adolescence. Like, again, like I always say, you're too young to be an adult, yet too old to be called a child. And at that time, influences would come from peers, from conversations you overhear from adults. And a lot, the things you'd see on TV, the books you read, a lot of things would visit your mind. And at that point, for me, at adolescence, something happened. And um, put very simply, I went astray. Long story short, I got into the university and got involved with um, black activism first. And then, supported by the literature of Dennis Brutus, Wole Shoinka, Muta Baruka and all of that, and then my love for reggae music. And then um, the cults came ca calling, the confraternities on campus, which prided themselves at the time as um, liberation forces against oppression. And that sounded good to me. And so I embraced one of the cult groups and joined a cult. It turned out to be not exactly what um, promised to be. it promised to be, it was um, a misadventure to a large extent. Mm -hmm. um, 
a lot of violence, a lot of drugs, a lot of um, intrigues. It was in the midst of all that that I got into a violent altercation with another armed group and um, blood was shed. Mm. And so I went underground as our custom was in those days. I went underground to hibernate and wait for the tension to come down before I would reappear because the police was after me. And so were the rival courts. But while I was hibernating, someone invited me to church and I hadn't been in church for a long time. So churching was something I just wanted to do for a change, for a breath of fresh air. Mm. But when I got to church that day, I saw something strange. I saw something I hadn't seen before. My idea of church before this time was a place where you had the men sitting on one side, the women on the, on the other side, side, elderly men, elderly women. Mm. And the few young people you would find in church mm. would either be with the music, um, mm. the choir, or hanging around at the back. But here was a room full of young people and the worship was good, the music was good. The worship was intense. At that point, as I sang in one of the songs, I saw a young man, his two hands up in the air, he was lost in concentration. He had a smile on his face, yet tears rolled down his cheeks while he was worshiping, singing a song I did not know. I watched him for a long time and I looked around and I saw the frenzy of young people seemingly devoted to a cause or a God that I did not know. And I knew that they had something I was looking for. There was a peace about them that got my attention. This was what I was looking for. I was tired of walking the streets and having to look back over my shoulder every two blocks. I was tired of expecting the bullet every day. I was tired of all that. I thought this was a good place to be. And so after that church service, I hardly heard what the preacher preached that day, but I went back because there was an unrest that mm. began in my spirit. Mm. Mm. So I went back the following day to see the pastor. He spoke to me the words of Jesus. He said, come and I will give you rest. At this time, I was a teacher in the university. I began to lecture in the university at the age of 24. And at that age, some of my students were my mates. And um, I was also on, um, undertaking a, a course, a PhD course mm. in um, semantics and social linguistics, yes? and in the University of Lagos. Mm. So I thought I knew enough about life to take on any man of God. So when I went back to the pastor that day, I was a bit giddy headed with um, intellectual pride, mm. intellectual mm. pride. Mm. I knew I was going to ask him some rough mm. and tricky questions about life. But you know, when I got there that day, all the questions I asked him, he answered from the Bible. Mm. He didn't make reference to any other book. Mm. He didn't talk about his life, mm. his father or his mm. uncle. Every question I asked him, he opened the Bible and answered mm. me. Every question I came up with, he opened the Bible and answered me. And he was still reading a portion of the Bible, somewhere in Hebrews mm. 10 or 11, mm when I made up my mind that the Bible had the answers to all mm, of life's mm. questions. And so I broke down at that point. Mm. And I asked him if people like me could also get born again. He said, yes, of course. I said, no, you don't know me. You don't know where I'm mm. coming from. I'm coming from a gone running background, mm. a drugs cult. background, a cult, secret cult background. So can people like me just become born again, just like that? And he said, absolutely. 
I said, how long would it take? He said, even now. Mm. And while he was yet speaking, I knelt down and he led me to Christ. He mm. prayed for me. Mm. Something happened mm. immediately. You know, the Bible calls it peace that passes all understanding. Mm. The joy was inexplicable. I drove back to the lecturer's quarters of the University of Lagos that they were lived at the time. I drove back singing. I was singing every church chorus I could remember. I was driving around town. I missed my way, went somewhere else. I was going home. I came back to go into the campus. I missed my way again. Mm. And I was driving around town full of joy. Mm. That day, for the first time, after I drove into the campus, I came out again. And for the first time in many years, I walked from the gate of the university mm. unarmed. I had no gun on me. I had no knife on me, no acid. I walked from the gate, a 30-minute walk to the lecturer's quarters unarmed because I knew that I had run into a God mm. who is able to protect mm. his own. That's how I gave my life to Christ. Wow. What a story. You know what's fascinating for me is that I wanted to ask you about the song Joy. Mm. It's not the most popular for most people, but that's my favorite song. Mm. I put it on repeat mm. over and over and over again. I told our, pro our director before we came here, Joy. I didn't know it came from this. You were singing the words to that song. Oh, yeah. Uh, I saw a boy with his two hands in the yes. air. Yes. <laughs> Lost in Lost deep in contemplation. Mm? And that's line that goes, all I wanted to do was be happy. And I just wanted I to, be wanted happy. to be happy. It speaks to the human desire to find peace. Watch me, the Lord and mighty God. Oh, that mighty God. Oh, that mighty God. We serve. Every day of my life, I will lift up your name, make the people know. Ah, you created Africa, Europe, and America, Asia and Australia, the world of your hand, the mountain valley that the deep blue sea. Where is the There's something about the music. Uh, when I talk about creativity, so take joy, for example. I listened to it again before this interview because I'm saying to myself, what is it about Bucci's music that gets to be? Uh, there's something about the music. There is, in joy, for example, there is this outlay of peaceful melody. I wouldn't just say peaceful melody. It's a call to peace. There is a call to peace in the tune that flows. And then the story that washes over it. And where does this creativity come from? I know you will say God, but I want you to take us back to your journey in creativity. And, uh, you know, where, how, how does it work for you? Uh, let me ask this. How many years after your conversion did you write Joy? I got saved in 1992, December 30th. In 1993, I wrote the song Joy. And now the thing about the creativity, people do what they know to do. Mm. I don't tell the guitar, but this is what you should play. I sing. I am after the message of the music. And I'm after the sound of the music. As you know, I love the reggae sound. Yeah. There's something about the Caribbean sound. And um, joy came, a, a, a mixture of reggae and salsa. Yes. <laughs> and so in that song, 
depending on the version that you listened to, I saw Nathaniel Bassi play the trumpet. He played the trumpet oh. in that song. And I didn't tell, did I tell him what to play? No. He just played his heart out in that song. In fact, when he was done, he said, no, 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 no. I'm not happy with that one. I need to do another take. And so he did another take. And we had a hard time choosing the which, first or the second. which one to use. Yes. So I let him flow. And then in that song also, I had Papa Tino, this um, aged septuagenarian from Congo, okay. the Republic of Congo. Okay. He played the saxophone on that song. Well, I didn't tell him wonderful. what to play. So the basses, all of them, I let them just enjoy themselves. So they just come behind your message, your singing. That's right. And so each brings his contribution. Each brings his contribution. The keyboard, the drums, all the sounds, and and wow. that's how they come. And a richness emerges that it, keeps warming the soul. Oh, and drawing the soul closer. I'll, I'll take that for a compliment. <laughs> and I'm serious. Thank I'm, you. I'm serious. Thank you. I probably listen to Joy several times in a week. I mm. listen to it when I go for my morning mm. walk. Mm. And uh, I, I'm saved for many years, but yet mm. he calls you to a place of seeking the rest in the mm, Lord. Mm. That joy that passes all understanding. Mm. And it, it, it's wonderful. Let, let's let's talk about music. When you gave your life to Christ, did you immediately sense this is what God calling me to do? Because you were lecturing. Mm. You were lecturing at, the, at like you said, at Uniland, yes. at the university. At, at one point, did you did it dawn on you? That, look, I need, I am called into the music ministry or, I didn't think I was called into the music ministry. Tell me about it. I didn't think I was going to be a musician. Mm. It didn't cross my mind. I loved music. Mm. And before I got saved, I was also a DJ in a nightclub. Yes, a reggae nightclub where we would go play reggae music all night and a little bit of calypso and salsa all night. That was my earliest involvement in music professionally. But it was a hobby something I loved to do as I lectured in the university. I would go out on Fridays and DJ in the floating booker. Mm. That's what the, the club was called yeah. at, the time. at that time. Yes. Mm. But when I got born again, I was so anxious to put away everything of my past. Mm. I took a break from music. Okay. I didn't listen to reggae music anymore. Okay. I caught off from the cult miraculously mm. and stayed alive. Mm. Yes, I cut off from everybody. Did you feel the reggae music was demonic at that time? No, no, no. There's, some Christians, it, there's some Christians who, 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 who think so. Think so. What, what was your perception after giving your life to Christ regarding reggae music? I just wanted to do away with everything. everything I didn't, past. Uh, yes. This was your past. I, I didn't research it. It, was, it belonged was to past. my past. So you just cut off. I, I cut off. Okay. So I wanted to learn my new culture, mm -hmm. understand the word, understand God, mm -hmm. and then ask him what he would have me do. Mm -hmm. But um, it didn't last many months mm -hmm. before my pastor picked me out. And he said he wanted to reach people out in the streets, mm -hmm. not in the church. He wanted to have a crusade and reach the people in the streets. Mm -hmm. Who in this place has been a DJ or involved in secular music? Mm -hmm. And I said, here, mm. he said, okay, can you make me a song that is not a church song, mm. a song that people on the streets can relate to. <laughs> can relate to. I went ahead and did it. And after that, that was it. What song was that? No, 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 I didn't get to record it. <laughs> okay. It was called Fusion. <laughs> okay. Yep. And I still remember part of the lines of Fusion. Go ahead. It was, Papam, Rongo, tell your friends, still fusion, come again. Pa -pam. Yeah, oh, wow. <laughs> Classic DJ line. I was flowing like a nightclub <laughs> DJ, yeah? The Rongo, tell your friends, say, fusion mm. has come to town, mm. yeah? Gather around. Because they didn't know what fusion mm. was. So I, I made the song, and days later, my pastor calls me to say, if you could do that, there's much more you can mm. do. How about doing a, a song for us? Mm. I knew from spending time with the Spirit of God that what he wanted me to do 
primarily was to write and not to sing. Okay. And so I began to write poems. At the time, I asked myself if I was writing those poems because I had been studying English language and literature in school. Was that what qualified me to write poems for the kingdom, in the kingdom, in defense of Christ, to propagate the gospel? I didn't think so. I wasn't quite satisfied. But I continued to write those poems. Readership had dwindled at this time. Young people don't read much. And so I published those poems in a few journals. They didn't get much exposure. So when the pastors told me, you can do this, I began to sing the poems that I had written. written. And so What a Mighty God was a poem I wrote. And some of these other songs, three in one, one in three, was a song that I, a poem, a poem you had that written. I wrote. And so I converted them. I made songs out of the poems I had written. And that's how it all began. Uh, did you at a point wake up to like, this is a calling now? Or how do you perceive your ministry, music ministry, uh, there was a point where you were like, okay, it seems this is this is it now. I'm going to focus on this. Your music ministry. Did I have this discussion with you before now? No. Oh. You, you spoke like you, you heard my heart. At a point, I became divided. And I said to myself, if the Lord has called you to write, and here you are singing, writer, where are your books? Where, where are your writings? And I said, should I stand before the Lord now? Is he going to ask me about the songs? Wouldn't he ask me about my writings? Mm. And so I repented. I said I wasn't going to sing any, anymore. By this time, I had put out three albums, and I said I wasn't going to sing anymore. I would spend my time writing. And some of my friends said, no, you can't do a thing like that. You just released an album and it's doing well out there. It's doing well. I said, well, I'd rather satisfy the one who called me than these people who have come to love what I do. Yes, yeah, sad, heavy, but I'd rather do this. So I said, I wasn't going to sing anymore. But the word came through a prophet of God, a brother who saw me and said to me, the Lord says to tell you, I allowed you to sing for a purpose, to give you an audience. If you write, who would read you? But when you write as Buchi, they having heard you sing, there would be an army of people who would read you and perhaps carried mm. to others. Mm. And so he encouraged me. That's how I got back on my feet mm. and I began to sing. Mm. And the Lord approved of me singing reggae music. Mm. I'm not singing reggae music because I grew up listening to reggae music. I was a reggae DJ. And so when it's time, when it was time to sing for the Lord, naturally it was reggae that came mm. forth. That's not just why. I have heard him say to me, teach your people to play reggae music well. Mm. And I wrote it down. What does that mean? He said, if I'm going to reach the people I want to reach through you, teach them to play reggae music well, because I intend to reach people through you. Mm. And it matters to me. Mm. And so I continued along that line, encouraged by the prompting of the Lord, yes, to sing this message in this genre of music. Mm. And then he also made me understand that the gospel is the message. Reggae is just a container. But the message is Christ. The message of my music is Christ. It is not reggae. The essence is not reggae. It is Christ. I sing Christ. I minister Christ. Reggae is the container. And when that um, dawned on me, I was encouraged, greatly encouraged. Okay, you know what we're going to do? 
we're going to pause at this point and I would continue my conversation with uh, guests, gospel music minister, reggae music minister. <laughs> Next week, I don't want to miss any part of this conversation because it's very, very rich. And I know you enjoy the second part if you join us next week. Thank you, Bucci. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi there and welcome back. I'm sure you were blessed as much as I was. And look, you don't want to miss the second part of my chat with Bucci where we look at his work with the Lord and the secret of his uh, of the power of his music. But before we go, I just want to share something that is on my heart. Just a few days ago, I returned from a trip to one island nation. I don't want to mention it here because of security reasons. This is a country known to be almost 100% Islamic. They even call themselves an Islamic Republic. But two things stood out of, for me is the fact that one just how much God was doing. There are a lot of people who are coming to the Lord. In an island where we thought we only see just a number of people, we saw three times that number. And it, it just struck me what Paul said when he said that, look, I might be in prison and in chains, but the gospel is not changed. In the same way, you can't stop the gospel. What, do I, what should we do in response to this? First of all, we need to rejoice and praise the Lord because he's at work in the nation. Secondly, we need to get involved with God. There's a need to have people who are praying, who are giving, who are making sure that the gospel goes to the ends of the earth. And that's something you can do. Uh, there's a lot God is doing. Whether you hear in the news that a place is completely close to the gospel, it's not true true. God is reaching out and he needs us to get involved. I'll say bye-bye here. I'll see you next week with the second part of my talk with Bucci, as well as the second part of these things I'm sharing with you. God bless you and bye. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody else.